Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're going to be looking at some of your seed starting setups. I'm super excited for this because it's the perfect time of year to be looking at this sort of thing. Real quick before we jump in, I did want to mention that our next video is going to be on garden before and afters. I'll get into all the details on that at the end of this video, but we have quite a number of these that we want to go through today, so we're just going to jump right in. First one looks like it is from Lauren in Southampton, New Hampshire, zone 6A. I see she has four grow lights hanging there. I've never actually seen a light that looks like that. They're so thin. Uh, she said that they are M-I-E-E-M-C-L-U-X C-1000 LED grow lights that they run for eight hours each day and clearly the plants are liking it. Uh, it does say that she has this set up in her basement. I think that's really common. I think a lot of people have basements where they're able to carve out a little bit of space to start seeds, but it's kind of a hard deal because most basements you're not receiving or the plants aren't receiving any natural light or any natural airflow. So you have to provide all of that for the plants. I mean, it's a good idea to do that even if you have windows and things, especially like, you know, strong light right on top of them and some airflow to make the seedlings really strong. But these plants look really healthy. Uh, she said that she started successfully close to 1,000 seedlings her first time around. Oh, look at the geraniums there. Look at all the color. Can you imagine just walking down your stairs and like, oh, this beautiful tray full of geraniums just staring at you? I'm gonna have to look into those lights. I hadn't heard of them before. I did ask too when we put a thing out about this video asking for, you know, to see your seed starting setups to share any tips that you might have. So it does look like she shared a few. She said hardening off is tough. That is tough. I think that's maybe one of the tougher things. So hardening off your seedlings is where you get them up and growing in your space inside somewhere and then you have to slowly introduce them to outdoor weather which means you have to introduce them slowly in incremental you know time amounts and if you forget and accidentally leave them out somewhere where they're going to get sun too long or if a windstorm comes through you can accidentally wipe out all the work you just put in she said that she purchased rolling carts on marketplace uh, to make this spring job easier i think that is a really good tip so rolling carts where you can roll them out easily roll them back in instead of picking up individual trays can you imagine picking up all those trays and moving them out Second tip, don't start too early. It takes willpower, but it is worth it. Transplanting into larger pots can be costly and takes a ton of time. I completely agree with that. You know, I'm running an experiment with some hardy perennials. I did start them already, and I'm going to pot them up and put them out in our heated greenhouse. But that kind of goes into her third tip, which is put building a, gre a greenhouse on her husband's to-do list. <laughs> a couple other things I do want to point out. I see some fly strips hanging down in between the lights. That could be, uh, there might be flies down there, but there might also be fungus gnats. That's a really good, effective way to take care of fungus, fungus gnats. If you see any little gnats flying through the air, I have really good with the yellow, good luck with the yellow sticky things that you just stick down in pots. Um, and you really can get it on top of it if you get after it quickly, but the fly strips are a great idea and it keeps them up out of your plants way. I've had those sticky things get stuck in my hair before. And it was a huge pain. Also, she included some beautiful pictures of her garden where she used some of those seedlings that we just saw. How fun is that? So she started the cabbage and then grew ornamental kale to replace the rows of cabbage that lined the pathway. So she did a second round of seed starting in June for fall planting. Awesome, thank you Lauren for submitting these pictures. Next one is from Justin in Alberta, Canada, zone 4A. And just looking at this picture right here, seeing how all the snow and knowing how cold it is out there and seeing how beautiful these seedlings are and they just look cozy and warm and so healthy. So four inch containers, it looks like maybe a reused burpee containers there, reused wave container, uh, which is a great way to recycle pots. In fact, I save a lot of our four inch, especially in the early spring when I'm planting pansies and violas, I save all of those containers and usually pop my stuff up that need it in here into that, those containers so I don't have to buy any other ones. But it looks like there's zinnias, maybe tomatoes, possibly marigolds in, in here. Um, so this is actually, Justin says it's a heated glass greenhouse. Uh, it doesn't significantly impact their heating bill. Uh, they kept, keep it set at about 10 degrees Celsius, which is right around 50, right Fahrenheit. That's encouraging to me because we're keeping our greenhouse set at 50 right now. And then we're gonna be kicking it up a little bit warmer here in maybe the next month or so. But to know that that's what temperature these plants are thriving in, that is really amazing. 
Uh, it faces southwest, so the sun heats it during the day and gives the seedlings ample light to grow, so no grow lights needed in that case. Most of the seeds, he says, he starts in February, March and hardens them off throughout April and May and plants in early June. Next one is from Nathan in Pennsylvania, zone 6B. I think this is a really great example of a simple setup. Uh, because it doesn't take a tremendous amount of space. Nathan said he got this little greenhouse, a tabletop greenhouse at I Ikea for around $20. No special grow lights, no special equipment. In fact, the cell packs that he's planted in, you can see an overhead here of them all planted and there's what, five, six, seven, eight that fit in there, are leftover annual packs from the past year. And then the next one he labeled all the things that he put in there, which is really fun to see, um, and just has it up next to a window. And uh, it's just a really good, idea for somebody who maybe rents that's what nathan said he rents and they plant all of these into containers so if somebody's in a similar situation this is a really good and kind of more decorative way of doing it i really love that oh and then he did include some pictures of the seedlings a little bit later on after they had grown up a bit doesn't it look awesome to see seeds sitting there outside clearly sitting in the sun oh i can't wait to soak in some heat like that and then some pictures further on down the road where they're planted up in containers. They look really great. Oh, I love this next one. This is from Tracy in zone 5B. It looks like a, just a shelving, plastic shelving unit maybe, with lights strung up with string. Yep, she said this is her first attempt at seed starting. Uh, she grew so much that they quickly formed a jungle in her house, which you can see them on her dining room table and in her kitchen there. Yes, they did take over your house, but they look great. That's amazing. She was able to gift close to 40 seedlings of tomatoes, hot peppers, and sweet red pe peppers to her neighbors. And she just wanted to show the setup that it takes next to nothing to start. So that whole setup, lights included, cost between $200 and $250. Um, so it was a plastic uh, shelving unit, $60 from Home Depot, and four stringable grow lights from Amazon. She said that she doesn't know what kind they were. She purchased them solely on the reviews, but they were $100 for all four of them. Um, and then just to attach them with strings so that she could raise and lower them as the seedlings need it. But she did say that she does plan to add a second strip of lights on each shelf. And I would recommend that. If you're doing uh, anything that's, you know, a little bit deeper, two lights really is handy because then you don't have to rotate your containers around to keep plants constantly under light. It just provides more even coverage and it makes for a little bit stronger seedlings. Uh, and then she said that she will start a little bit later this year too, um, to avoid having them take over her house. But as far as containers and soil, she didn't have to buy any of that. She asked neighbors for donations of empty yogurt containers, <laughs> things like that, that she could reuse to start seeds in. So that's just a really great idea. And it looks really good just sitting there in her living room. It looks almost like the stack and grow light system that I've had from Gardener Supply, kind of the same kind of feel. Next one is from Sarah in North Carolina, zone 7B. First thing I notice when I see this picture is that she's using the Grow Ease seed starter trays that I like so much from Gardener Supply that have the self-watering reservoir underneath. That and adding vermiculite on top of all of my seed trays has been kind of the two game changers in seed starting for me. Um, so it's really fun to see that in somebody else's setup. This next picture shows us a little bit closer up what the lights look like. So Sarah said her favorite lights are Vivo Sun, and you can see that they're being held up with like a metal strip. Maybe it looks like one of those U strips that has been bent, maybe, I could be wrong, um, and held up with screws to the ceiling. A lot of times with, uh, especially, I don't know about these bulbs, but I use the high efficiency, like high output LED bulbs. You don't have to raise and lower them based on your seedling size. You can just set them. I set mine at the highest setting and just leave them there and the ceilings do great. So this could be the same kind of situation, but she does say that they run them for 14 hours and this setup is in their garage on some of the shelves there. You can see a fan up there. Oh, I just love looking around just to see what everybody uses. And then, oh yeah, some really great pictures of the seedlings here looking really strong. And then some of the seedlings once they've been outside, probably in the process of hardening off. Sarah says she starts all kinds of seeds, lettuce and herbs in the winter, tomatoes and peppers in early spring, and broccoli, cabbage, and Brussels sprouts in the fall. Doesn't tend to start a lot of flowers, but usually the ones uh, she does start is sweet pea, are sweet peas and snapdragons. Oh, I love this next one. It's like a little mini terrarium, but it's got a grow light in top. 
So this is from Sean in Frankfurt, Germany, unsure of what zone, uh, but it's a, a small set from Ikea just to start some special hot peppers. You know my sister is doing that exact thing. I have a little tabletop grow light that she's going, that I have, she's going to use this year um, to start a, she wants to have a hot pepper garden. So same kind of idea here. I just love small setups like this, especially if they're decorative and look more like a decorative greenhouse, because I can imagine myself using something like this in my kitchen. You know, I've got herbs growing out here, but if I had something that had proper light in it like this does, where I could put a few little potted herbs in and keep them looking really nice in my kitchen where they're really easy and accessible when I'm cooking, I would love something like that. Next is Jenny from Baltimore, Maryland, zone seven. I love seeing this kind of setup. I wondered if I was gonna see any lights that were hanging from the ceiling uh, because I know a lot of people like to get shop lights, which that's what this is, a four foot long shop light from Lowe's. Uh, Jenny put LED bulbs in them, them and hung them on chains from the floor joists in the basement ceiling. Oh, so this is in her basement. She did mention that there is a small light stand sitting there, a tabletop one that she didn't actually end up using after all, but she just sets everything up on an inexpensive fold-out table. Uh, she runs her lights from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. And then she also has an oscillating stand fan, which is what I use here in the studio. And that's set on a timer as well. And that just helps provide a lot of airflow to keep the seedlings really strong. It looks like she's starting some seeds in some growy seed starter trays with the self-watering reservoir. It looks like there are three of those. Um, some regular seed trays with like the 72 count one there on the left. I use those like for my Lysianthus and Snapdragon, some of those things that I grow a ton of. But I also see like some meat trays, you know, see there on the right hand side, that yellow tray over there. Uh, and Jenny said that she also purchased some wicking mats from Gardener Supply, which you can purchase separately. You don't have to get the whole kit and fashioned her own self-watering trays. And then the last picture here shows a bunch of winter sewing that she did. Winter sewing is awesome. If you haven't uh, tried that yet, maybe we can link some winter sewing videos down below uh, because it really is a wonderful way to start seedlings if you just don't have space or you don't want to spend budget, you know, set a budget to buy grow light stuff and, and all of that. Winter sewing is a really great option. Oh, it looks like Jenny has a YouTube channel called Harmony Hills Home and Garden. I'll have to check that out. Next is from Megan in New Mexico, zone 8A. I love the look of this. I like the look of Baker's Racks. I always have. I think that they kind of have a really neat vibe to them. It actually reminds me a lot of one that I see in my sister's house because see that bottom shelf is full of cookbooks. Uh, my sister Monica has a shelf like this that's completely top to bottom full of cookbooks. But I love these clamp lights. I think that's a really unique and different look and it looks kind of decorative and fun. Um, so these are clipping contractor lights on a wire rack with daylight LED bulbs. She runs them 16 hours a day. The full cost of materials, including seed trays, was less than $200, all purchased at Walmart. Um, she does succulents and starts tomatoes, peppers, onions, and various flowers. Once the seeds sprout, she raises the seed tray up closer to the lights with blocks of wood, which, great idea. She said it's not like the prettiest, but it works. I think it's great. And I really kind of, I like the look of those downturned lights quite a bit. Next is a fun one from Katie in New York, zone 5A, kind of a fun before and after here. So this picture here is what she calls her sad spare room. And this is what it looks like after she did a coat of paint and some inexpensive grout in laminate flooring from Lowe's. She's converted this spare room into her seed starting space slash food preservation supply area. That is really awesome. I love the addition too of the desk because that's so important. I mean, I'm constantly, you know, using seeds and buying seeds and they're in and out and I always am having to update my inventory, organize my notes and figure out, you know, I don't, it's just nice to have a little area there that's right next to all of your seeds um, to organize and plan and dream and it has a nice view out the window. I just love that. As far as the seed starting setup, we can see another one of those metal shelves, which I call baker's racks. I'm not sure if that's what they call them at the store. Katie said it's a freestanding steel utility shelf. That's probably the proper name from Lowe's. And then four foot LED lights. Uh, the brand is High Quality from Amazon. You can purchase a 10 pack of four foot lights for approximately $100 and they plug into one another so you only need to use up one outlet for your entire setup. That's really interesting. Uh, she uses a timer and has it set to run for 10 hours during the day and can easily adjust the height of the lights with the supplied chain and S hooks, which you can see in there. Oh, what is this? This is from Elizabeth in Pennsylvania zone 6A. She winter sows all her seeds in Ziploc bags. 
Whoa, I've not ever seen that before. They're propped between her raised beds with marshmallow sticks for a neat, tidy, and efficient growing season. What a great idea. You don't like no need for like saving water jugs or tape or any of that. Oh, look at the top down view. Look at the beautiful seedlings in there. So this method makes it so easy to unzip to check for sprouts as well as for cooling in the spring. I wonder if the clothespins are to weight the bags open once they need to stay open because sometimes they, you know, they kind of want to close back on themselves. Um, she said that snow and wind will not move them or don't move them. In the past, she's sown tomatoes, carrots, broccoli rob, onions, lettuce, zinnias, Dalmatian peach foxglove, mahogany slender hibiscus, snapdragon bleeding heart, just to name a few. At the end of the season, I just wash the bags and tuck them away for next year. Wow. She said she made a YouTube video called Winter Sewing in Ziploc Baggies about the process. So I don't see a channel name, but maybe if you put that in the YouTube search, you could find it. Great idea, Elizabeth. No special equipment required. Next one is from Nicholas in Connecticut, zone 7A. And there's something so pleasing about this setup. Everything fits beautifully, but not only the seed trays, but if you take a look toward the back, like this might show my type A tendencies a little bit too much, but see how the cords are wrapped around the back legs, making it look so nice and tidy. There's not like a gob of cords hanging anywhere. I appreciate things like that. I think that that makes it really nice to have inside your home to make it look just as cleaned up as possible. Uh, I see a whole bunch of seed starting potential there. That's a lot. So eight 72 count trays there. And then I don't know if those are the grow ease trays. I should probably read Nicholas left some information here, um, but it looks like maybe 24 count trays by a 10 of those. That's a lot of seedlings right there. So this is a metal shelving rack from Home Depot with two four foot LED shop lights attached to the bottom of each shelf. When seedlings need to be closer to the light, he just turns a um, unused tray upside down just to raise them up a little bit. That's a great, a great way to do it rather than having to mess with uh, lowering lights up and down. That can be kind of a pain to do. Oh, but look at the, look at the garden picture, you guys. So those must be some of the things you started from seed. I see some mahogany splendor hibiscus there in the back. There's some maybe gomfrina there, some snapdragons, some pincushion flower, possibly uh, rudbeckia. Oh, that's in the black obelisk. That's gorgeous. Great job, Nicholas. Next is from Louise in Sweden, zone 6B. I love seeing this outside cold frame setup. So she said she grows most of her, seed, does most of her seed starting in this cold frame and sometimes there's even snow outside. Um, if there's an extra cold night, she'll add some extra protection over the seedlings. But that's really encouraging to see because you know I'm in a zone six too. And so you know I'm just learning about what I can start outside and what I need to start in here. It's gonna be an uh, interesting several years trying to figure out what I can get away with. So seeing your setup is really, Really wonderful. Uh, mostly reusing plastic containers from sweet shops for seed starting containers. Mo uh, most seeds are started with the lid on and then taken off after germination, which is great. Uh, also, it looks like, I think in the back there, you can see some pre-grown dahlias. And she says that she pre-grows the dahlias so that they will bloom, they have enough time to bloom, and also, uh, for the tender dahlia shoots not to be eaten by slugs. That's something that I don't have to worry about here really, which I'm thankful for. Um, but before planting everything out, uh, she starts opening the door in the day and then takes the seedlings out during the daytime to make the plants more sturdy and ready for life in the garden. So that's the tender time where it's, you know, in and out for a little while until those seedlings uh, can withstand being outside. Oh, I like to see chairs and stuff, like what works in a space like this, chairs and benches, that's on my mind big time. Ooh, whoa, this one from Alex in Washington zone 6B. What a beautiful space. Look at that. And I recognize that grow light. It's exactly what I have right behind me. It's the sunlight three tier garden from Gardener Supply. Um, and they have been wonderful for us. It looks beautiful in your space, especially with that industrial kind of looking table, but it's got the warmth of the wood drawers in front. That's just a wonderful space. That and there's windows all over, so it's a nice bright room. Oh. So Alex said that this is actually a small greenhouse that used to be an unfinished storage space that just screamed potential. Well, I should say so. You did a fantastic job. Um, Alex says that most of the majority of the plantings are directly sown in the garden, but they do have this one light stand to get some things going. 
That is wonderful. Oh, this is interesting. Sherry in Anderson in the United States, zone 6A. What kind of shelving unit is that? Sherry said that she's new to seed starting. I have an old aviary that I made into a greenhouse and it works perfect for seed starting. Isn't that wonderful? That just shows what you can do with just like, I mean, like a hutch or something like that. You can retrofit and make your own little greenhouse. I would love to see this and hear your thoughts on your setup after you have done some seed starting in there. That's a really interesting idea in a beautiful piece of furniture. Oh, there's a video with this next one submitted by Brianna in Minnesota zone four. Oh, I love being able to walk in from the outside and get a real feel for that space. She said, this is a 10 by six foot space built in the basement of their 1920s farmhouse. It's an enclosed space built with insulation panels and two by fours. Uh, we also wired in electrical outlets. So it looks like metal racks. Three of the shelves have three lights each of the Barron's grow lights from Amazon. The rest of the shelves have metal LED ceiling panel lights that were given to them and modified, zip tied to the shelves. Uh, their lights are run on a 12 hour timer. She said that they actually prefer these wire, these type of wire shelves because they're really easy um, to use zip ties uh, to manage lights, cords, heat mats, all of those sorts of things. And that makes complete sense. Look at all of those trays. Oh my goodness. Oh, I see eucalyptus on the ground. I'm growing that for the first time this year. That's right, isn't it? Isn't that eucalyptus? Dang, I need like a walk, walk through tour here. What you got going? They have computer fans for air circulation and an automatic exhaust fan. If the temperature gets above a certain degree that they can adjust, the fan turns on and pushes the warm air out. That would be necessary in a closed in space, I'm imagining. Like if you left this to its own devices without any of that kind of air helps, you would have a sauna going on in here. It'd be so full of condensation. So that's really great that you have a good system in place. I could spend a lot of time in that room there. Oh, this is a pretty setup. This is from Emma in New South Wales, Australia, zone 10B. What kind of seeds are you starting in zone 10B? So this piece of furniture, this looks like a normal shelving unit with a cupboard. Yep, she said it, it matches her other office furniture in her home office. This is right next to her desk so she can look at her seedlings all day when she should be working, she said. I would have the same problem. So the grow lights were ordered from eBay and fitted and fitted then to the shelving unit. And fans uh, are in there. I don't see the fans, let's see, let me look. Uh, I don't see that the fans are probably backed up, I'm guessing. Uh, but they're there for good air circulation and she can fit two 24, seed cell, uh, 24 cell seed trays on each shelf. Um, and she said, oh, there, here we go. It may seem strange to have grow lights in such a warm growing zone, but it really has been a game changer as I grow most of our produce myself now. That's amazing. The dahlias on top of the shelves are also from my garden. I've never heard of dahlias or grow lights or most garden things before finding your channel. Oh, that's so awesome. That's a really good idea to uh, retrofit an office shelving unit like that. See, we're getting such good ideas. People are so creative. Whoa. Look at this setup. Look at it from outside. So this is a solarium on the house. Oh, so this is from Angela in Canada, zone 5B. So vegetables, herbs, flowers, everything. Start March 1st and plant out June 1st. Heat mats until germination, then lights on timers for a minimum of 14 hours overnight. And then the lights are off during the day and natural sunlight during the day in the south facing solarium. Depending on the weather, they move, uh, start moving out to the greenhouse early May and moving up into four inch pots. Um, so I guess started March 1st, moved up into four inch pots in the greenhouse in May and then planted out June 1st. Last year we started about 800 plants, darn seed catalogs. <laughs> I think we could all commiserate. But again, the wire shelving units, those are a popular one. And this, I'm not sure, I didn't really look on the others we've seen so far, but this, these have casters on the bottom, which I don't know if they normally come with that or if that's an optional thing, but I think that that would be extremely handy. These light systems have wheels and it's been so nice because you can pull them out clean underneath and then push them right back. It's really, really nice. That would stop me in my tracks if I saw that view out somebody's solarium on their house. I would want really bad to knock on the door and have a tour. Whoa, this next setup is intense. It's huge. This is from Carla in Minneapolis, Minnesota, zone 5A. So a nice chilly zone there. Uh, looks like we're dealing with the metal shelving racks, but these are in black. I didn't know you can get them in black. 
She did know, she said the obsessive designer in me spent a month searching out the right items to create my setup so that my lights, fans, heating mats, and cord management all look tidy and clean. And of course they had to match. I can appreciate that, I like that. Um, you know, if you're gonna be setting up your space, you may as well take a little extra time and make it a really pleasing area. And if you already have your setup, like kind of making slow changes, which we've done, you know, um, I started out with a whole menagerie of different types of grow lights and clamp lights and stuff all over the place and have throughout the years kind of streamlined my process to where I really like all of the things I have. Um, and that's kind of a fun thing to do. So uh, Carla used LED lights, so it looks like three for each shelf, which is, I would say, necessary. If you're putting your 22 inch trays, which is what's standard lengthwise, um, 22 inch tray in the shelving units that way instead of long ways, if that makes sense, uh, I think three lights would almost be necessary for good light coverage. Uh, so the LED lights do not need to be adjusted uh, height wise as the plants get, you know, when they start off shorter and get taller, they can just stay at the same. They're run for 16 hours a day, and she uses 18 inch deep wire racks with the added shelf liners. Oh, a tip that she gave was she upgraded to Bootstrap Farmer 10 by 20 extra strength trays and plug inserts that will last a lifetime and are modular for different plug tray sizes. They're super sturdy and uh, she's able to reuse them every year. And also a second tip was she bought a cheap lightweight hose and sprayer that attaches to her laundry sink, which has been a huge time saver, which I can imagine with that many pots to water doing it all with a spray can or even a pump sprayer i mean that's a lot more work that is a really amazing seed starting setup next one is from jordan in sioux falls south dakota zone 4b jordan said i just purchased my first gardener's supply grow light system i'm so excited to start seeds this year with it you will love it i have the bamboo led grow light garden and i think the really fun part about this is if you are putting it in your interior space, in your um, living room or kitchen or something like that, dining room. It's fun to have it look more like a piece of furniture. Yes, they do cost more <laughs> when you're buying that, but you're buying it more for their, not more for their aesthetic, but kind of. Like you want them to be beautiful as well as practical and functional for what you are wanting to do. I think that this is a really fun way to get it. Also, if you wanna add more to these later, they are stackable so you can get more and, and keep adding. I think two or three, depending on what size this one is. Did you note what size it was? I'm not sure. This might be like the medium size. You might be able to stack two or three as you want to maybe expand your seed starting operation and so on and so forth. So there's some movement there, which is nice. And they just look so pretty. I like the wood with that galvanized tray. Mine are all full of stuff right now. And the last one for today is from Trina from Texas Zone 8B. It looks like from this nighttime picture that all the seed starting is happening in this like cold frame here. I'm not sure if it's heated. Let's take a look. Oh, these pictures were taken on March 28th. That's a fox there in the spotlight. <laughs> um, they had a freeze on the 21st of February and everything inside, even inside the cold frame froze. She said it all came back though. Um, but inside, let's see, there's a beautiful wood table. We're looking at different styles of wood tables for our greenhouses. I love to see this. Um, a wood table with a whole bunch of seeds started in there, some hanging planters. Oh, and then husky shelves. So that um, metal shelf there with the seed trays is a husky shelf. That's the kind that we use in our barn and they are tough, tough. They can hold a lot of weight. Trina said they use Ant Lux four foot LED grow light, 80 watt, 600 watt equivalent, full spectrum integrated growing lamp fixtures. Clipped onto the wire shelves, which are the husky shelves. The lights are run for 15 hours a day, but she doesn't put the lights on, doesn't turn them on until she sees germination. The picture with several trays has a total of 502 cells. Dang, 502 cells. And there are more in other parts of that cold frame. That's a lot of seeds, a lot of seedlings. And that is gonna be it for seed starting setups for today. Thank you to all of you who took the time to send in your information and pictures. We really appreciate it. It's just such an inspirational thing to look at this time of year as we're cruising into seed starting and to look at all of your creativity and all the different spaces. Um, you know, cause we got to see a, a, a wide variety of areas and methods and grow lights and shelves and all kinds of things. And that is really, I think, beneficial and helpful um, to see those things. Like I said, our next video is gonna to be on garden before
before and afters. So if you have a picture of anything in your garden, a picture of what it looked like before, and then a picture hopefully from about the same angle of what it looks like after, we would love to see some really inspirational things that way. So you can find the link in the description down below. It, it'll take you to a Google form and you can just fill that out pretty quickly, submit your pictures, and then we'll get that one put together. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.